Now we'll do another case of superposition of simple harmonic motion. The same amplitude and phase, but different omegas. Now, it turns out those complex exponentials are very useful in some cases, but they don't help you in some cases. In this case, it's actually better to stick with sinusoids. So we're going to use sinusoids to figure this out. So we're going to go ahead and go straight to x1 plus 2. We don't need to write the individual solutions. We've done this a few times now. We know what we're doing. So they have the same amplitude. So in the sum, the amplitude could come out. And we'll use cosines. So we would have the cosine of one of them and plus the cosine of the other one, omega 2 t. And you'll notice I left out the phases, right? So I said they have the same phase. Really, we just said that phi 1 equals phi 2. But I went ahead and said phi 1 equals phi 2 equals 0. Because for this problem, if they have the same phase, it doesn't matter. So we'll worry about that some other time, OK? But for now, in addition to the same phase, they have no phase. I can arbitrarily set it to whatever I want just by putting where time equals 0. OK, so this expression is hard to simplify because we have two sinusoids with different numbers inside their uh, inside the argument. So what we need is an identity, a very important identity that will come up a lot in physics, the, cosine, the uh, sum to product identity. The cosine of one number plus the cosine of another number, we'll just call them alpha and beta, is equal to 2 times the cosine of the um, sum of them over 2, alpha plus beta over 2, times the cosine of the difference, alpha minus beta over 2. So in this case, it's the uh, sum to product rule. You can also use it to go backwards. You can do There's versions with signs. There's general versions, everything. Let's just start with this one. So the cosine of one number plus the cosine of another number will follow this rule. These can be numbers, these can be functions of time, whatever. Uh, this is always true. And this is what we can do to manipulate this answer, or this function, to see if it gives us something that makes more sense. Okay? So we just start plugging in. We say x1 plus 2 must therefore be 2, has to be there. And the amplitude is just along for the ride. So twice the amplitude, that's the first thing we learn, um, times the cosine. And now, uh, this plus this over 2, omega 1t plus omega 2t over 2. So if we were going to write that as a single frequency, it would be omega 1 plus omega 2 over 2 times t. Right? I just pulled them out and left the t. They're both distributing onto the t there. Okay, And then the other one is cosine. And then it's just the minus term, omega 1 minus omega 2 over 2 times t. Okay. And this is your answer. This is another way you could write that superposition. And you could look at it and see if it starts to make any sense. You could think about now, we can think of this as one sinusoid modulated by another sinusoid. Because if the frequencies are kind of close and they're kind of high, this creates a pattern called beats. You have a fast frequency signal modulated by a slow frequency envelope. So let me show you uh, what that looks like and show you how it really does make sense. Let's see. So here I'm going to put up two sinusoids. Okay? They have, uh, well, two cosines. We'll call them cosines. They have slightly different frequencies. Therefore, when you plot them together, they go in and out of phase. Like right here, they're out of phase. This negative is right above that positive. But then since they propagate at slightly different frequency, they end up in phase again. This high positive is above that high positive. So they go in and out, in and out, in and out, because they have slightly different frequencies. So you can imagine if you put them on top of each other, then you can really see that effect. Here they're out of phase. They propagate a little bit. They end up in phase. And they propagate a little bit out of phase, propagate a little bit in phase. So that's what two sinusoids with slightly different frequency will do. And you can see that. So now, if you add them without thinking about the sum to product rule, if you just add these, what's going to happen? They're going to cancel here, and they're going to add here, and they're going to cancel here, and they're going to add there. So there's the sum. right? So they canceled here. We get nothing. 
and they added here, we get a big amplitude. Actually, we get twice the amplitude. And then they cancel here, and they add here. So these are called beats. So if you were to look at this wave, or maybe listen to it, it would be big, uh, large amplitude, then quiet, large amplitude, quiet, wah, wah, wah. That's the beat effect that you get when you superpose two similar frequencies. And you can see that if we go back now to um, our expression, that the frequency, the high frequency part, is the average of the two frequencies, so omega 1 plus omega 2 over 2. And the frequency of the slow envelope is the difference over 2. So you can see it. It actually makes perfect sense from here. And then this identity gives you something that really looks like it describes the beat phenomenon, the beat effect.